there. You are listening to the Light FM's Girl Talk podcast. My name is Carol. I'm Alicia. Hey, I'm Trisha. <laughs> and we are so glad that you are here today. Thank you for joining us for another edition of the Girl Talk podcast. It's always more fun when you show up. Um, today, we are discussing why we judge. Now, there's a lot of judgment going on, especially on social media. I'm seeing it right now. I'm wishing and praying that we could go back to when we all posted pictures of what we were having for lunch and cute <laughs> videos. I know. And we used to complain about that. Yeah, we did. But now it's like mm, every single day there's something new. Uh, masks, no masks. School, no school. I mean, you know, everything is a divisive issue right now. And so we thought we would try to tackle this topic of why we judge. And um, I don't know, do you guys have ideas about why you think I was just, you know, kicking it around in my head? And I think I have a, a couple of reasons maybe I judge. Um, well, I know that I am much more likely to judge someone else when I am not in a good place emotionally. Like I'm yeah. frustrated and... I'm running late or I'm upset about something. And, and what happens to me is I think my needs are greater than your needs. And so you're, you know, it's, you're hindering me from getting my needs met. And, and I start to make those judgments and it happens almost always when I haven't spent enough time, like in prayer and my, my mind is, is swirling around with anxiety. And I'll tell you, it happens almost always when I'm running late. Mm -hmm. Like uh, for j this is a silly, this is a silly thing, but let's say I'm, I'm driving on a road and someone pulls out in front of me and they're driving slowly. <laughs> and my, my initial thought is you are ruining my life. This is my road that I'm on and I've got a schedule and you are stopping me. My needs are greater than your needs. And I judge them and I think they're a bad driver or, you know, they're very selfish and, you know, all those things happen. And that's a silly example, but that's kind of how I get tripped up into the judgment thing. Yeah. What about you, Lish? Well, I think um, I totally agree with what Trisha is saying is when you're stressed or um, things are going on in your own life and you, it's a way to kind of put it on, get it off of you and put it on someone else. It's like, it's not my problem. It's their problem. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to not judge people. And you th I think we think, especially as Christians, you know, it's not our job to judge. We're not the ultimate judge, but I think just our nature always does it. It just always jumps to that. It's like, why are they doing that? Or I can't believe they're letting their children do that. I would never do that. And then one day you look around and you're like, oh my God, I, I, I oh my gosh, I, I just did that, that same thing that they just said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, and I don't think we really listen to each other very much and we don't think about the circumstances that other people are in. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, um, our tendency is, you know, just like you said, when we're, when we're tired, when we're, you know, um, insecure about decisions that we're making, we tend to, to mm -hmm. judge a little yes. bit more. And so as I was thinking about this topic, um, my church has been in Philippi, the book of Philippians. And so we've been um, kind of drilling down on, on that book. And in chapter two, this verse, just, I could not get it out of my mind as we were um, trying to prepare for this, this episode. It says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. And for me, I find that when I judge, I am selfishly um, trying to be ambitious or get ahead or be better than, or, you know, set myself up higher than, or I'm conceited thinking I have all the answers um, mm -hmm. when really humility, I think is the place that we need to start as believers. And it's such a hard thing because, and, and I think this is one of the reasons that I'm so, passionate about accountability. I need accountability worse than everybody on this Zoom meeting right now, because I am, you know, the old hymn says it prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. And I need people to say to me, you know, are you humbling yourself or are you looking out for number one? Because our world will tell you that if you don't look out for yourself that nobody else will. And, you know, just like you were saying, Alicia, you know, we're not supposed to judge, but we can be fruit inspectors, you know, I mean, we get that whole, 
and I'm, I'm not I'll pray for you, yeah, you know, I'm not, yeah. I'm not knocking that. Cause I, I think, you know, the fruit of your life does speak louder than any of your actions. Right. But at the same time, I think, I think we get in that little self-righteous mode that we're just, you know, going to tell you what you're doing wrong when really, um, we need to look at your own self, <laughs> you know? And so I try as in getting ready for this episode, when my temptation has been to scroll down Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and see posts from people who have a very strong opinion about things. My first reaction has been, has tr I'm trying to make it look at your own self first, uh -huh. you know, look at your own self. Uh, because I think now more than ever before, people are looking at our faith and looking at our walk with God and they are dying to see something that works, something that brings peace and something that's hopeful. And we have a real opportunity, but our tendency is, of course, to default to that judgment. And I think we just want to be right. Yes. Carol, I've been doing a Bible study um, through Lisa Turkhurst. Mm -hmm. um, it's not supposed to be this way. Yeah. And it's a, the, the word she uses that I think hits home for me in this discussion is assumptions. Mm -hmm. We make assumptions mm -hmm. about what other people are doing why they're doing it, how they feel. And she even talks about, we make assumptions um, about what God should do. And these assumptions are setting us up for resentment, for all manner of, of failings and, and uncomfortable feelings. Because when I assume that someone's doing something I assume I know why they're doing it. I assume all these things about them, which may not be true at all. Right. And I then go on and put their assumptions on me. I bet they think this about me. Mm -hmm. And it's like this cycle that will tear me down if I don't stop and, 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 and take a look at those assumptions. Does that make sense? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely it does. One of, you know, something that kind of bothers me with the assumptions is that people assume things about you because of where you work or where you go to church or sometimes people assume things about me because of an opinion my husband has. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I don't necessarily have the same opinion that he does, but they assume because we're married, we have the exact same opinions on everything and I, I just it's like let's look at the person let's look at the individual let's believe that they have good intentions and a good heart and you know I know a political season is coming up and there's going to be huge division but can we assume the good in people that whoever they vote for whether it's who we vote for or or they vote for the opponent uh -huh that they have good reasons why they're doing that. And that's where I think the judgment comes in. They're like, oh, they voted for so-and-so. So now I think A, B, C, and D about them. Mm -hmm. And it, it may not be the case. They have a reason to do it. Um, but I think it gets hard when you're so passionate about something and someone is doing the opposite that you're doing, then you, yeah. you jump to that judgment. I wonder if, it just hit me while you were talking about that. I wonder if, um, it takes more time to engage in conversation about things we disagree on. So making that assumption, mm -hmm. we just automatically think we have a, a free pass on engaging in conversation about it. Cause there are people I have a relationship with who believe very differently than I do. And, you know, I think about the song together from for King and country. Um, and, and basically they're highlighting in that song, the things that, are different about us are the things that make us stronger, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think we've lost that ability to see the differences in each other. Um, I go back to something my pastor shared with us, um, our, our church several years ago, he said, there are beliefs, there are preferences. Um, and then there are um, beliefs, preferences, and there was one other one. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it, the beliefs are the same but the preferences like the worship style that you like, uh -huh, those are uh -huh. going to be different for everybody. Those preference convictions, beliefs, convictions, and preferences. Beliefs are the things that are all the same. We believe in Jesus. Jesus died on the mm -hmm. cross for our sins. Those things are foundational. And, and then our convictions are things that we are personally convicted about mm -hmm. things that we, you know, um, 
the, any number of things that you feel a personal conviction in your walk with God about. And then there are preferences, things that you prefer, like worship style or how you dress when you go to church, and any number of things. But when those beliefs are the same, we can. We, it seems like we've lost the ability to gather around those beliefs and to be one around those beliefs and to let give each other permission to have differences when it comes to convictions and preferences. So I let me comes ask, back to oh, humility. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. I know. Ah. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think it does come back to Carol, something that you said earlier. And Alicia, I want to get your thought on this humility. It is, it is humility. That is the, um, the bomb that solves it. But here's the problem. Here's what I've learned about humility for a while. I started praying, God, give me a servant's heart. That was my prayer. And I thought, well, he's just going to give me a servant's heart, <laughs> but it didn't work like that. I would have it for about ah, two hours <laughs> and then I would, it would just go away because it's, it's more than just like, oh, I'm going to try and I'm going to work myself up to having a servant's heart. It goes deeper. Having humility, I'm learning the hard way goes deeper. It goes down to what I think about other people, what I think mm -hmm. about myself. It's a heart mm -hmm. issue. It's not a decision that, that, that's like, um, you know, like I'm going to walk a mile a day. It's not like that. You, ha it's, it, it, it's a deep dive. Um, but it can be done. Like I'm, I'm starting to see now some of the thought patterns that I have been fighting that did not allow me to have a servant's heart. Like my desire to be comfortable, my desire to, when I'm done with work to have, you know, no problems and I, I'm done with working, I'm done with doing stuff. And so I didn't have a servant's heart for my family. But if I dig deeper and I realize, um, no, I do have, I do, I'm thinking differently. I want to think about their needs. I want to think about what they want. I want to think about pleasing them. I want to think about honoring God by serving them. That's when I was starting to make progress. And the humility piece is everything with the conflict. You said something a few weeks ago about that and, and how humility can stop an argument in its tracks. Once one person mm -hmm. takes the, the road of humility, yeah. it's done. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can meet together and have a, have a, a valuable conversation. So humility is huge, but it's, it's effortful. <laughs> Well, I was going to say battling the flesh is something that we all do every day. And that's why, you know, we're called to die to the flesh because I think we all want to be right. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody wants to be told that they're wrong. Nobody wants to be told that their viewpoint is wrong. And so we all in this battle to be right. Um, and, and here's what I, I don't want this to sound like, because there's, there's definitely a place where you stand up for what you believe in. I, I'm wholeheartedly yeah. on board with that. But then there are places in those convictions and in those preferences that we got to give each other an opportunity to, I mean, we experience things differently. We, we respond to things different. I'm a very visual learner. So if you give me a word picture, I'm going to totally embrace that. And, and that's just the way my mind works. That's the way God created. I don't believe he created us all to be the same else. We would all look like right. someone It'd else. Be boring. I mean, yeah, exactly. But <laughs> and we would and, never learn anything. That's true. so true. That's so true. But now it seems like this day and time, no one wants to learn anymore. Everyone has it all figured out. I know they're Everybody all right. We're, we're all right. Well, so, okay. I have a question for you guys. Going back to what you said, Carol, about, okay, if the, the standard is your beliefs and if we can all get around that, how do you not judge someone that doesn't have that same baseline of belief like they just don't even believe anything that you know is true you know the bible tells us there are certain truths and you have you have to put i mean that's kind of a box that you have to stand by but how do right. you not judge the other person that's like that's ridiculous i the, the way that i have done it is i prayed that god would never let me forget what it was like to be lost mm -hmm. because really i mean those beliefs and those convictions and those preferences are for believers. For people who aren't believers, yes, we need to stand up for what we believe in. Yes, we need to hold out hope to them. Yes, we need to share the truth with them. But with the realization that they're not going to behave like a believer's going to be, or, or like a believer should behave. 
Sometimes it's the exact opposite. You know, we expect believers to behave differently and they don't, present company included. You know, that's why I'm a work in progress. I don't have it all figured out yet, but I think there are two different conversations there. But I think we go back to the first place we started was with humility. I don't ever want to forget what it was like to be lost and not have hope in my life. Because I think if you can go back and touch that place in your life, then all of a sudden when they spout out things that may be unkind or, or hurtful about your fate, you're like, I'm expecting that, you know, it's like Trisha was saying from the Lisa Turker study, I'm, my, my, my assumptions about them kind of soften because I remember what it was like to be where mm. they were. And I, I don't ever want to lose that sense of being relatable in the fact that I want, I, I want to remember what it was like to be without God, because I think if we don't, then our ability to reach people is lessened because that's a great reminder. I never think yeah. about it like that. Cause I was just talking to a friend the other day about like, what would you do if you didn't believe? Like, can you imagine right now going through all of this and not, not having that? Yeah. Like I would feel so lost and, and like, it's been hard. It's been a really hard season, but at least I can pray. And yeah. like, that makes me feel better. You can read a devotion. You can go to these, these faithful people and listen to them and find comfort. I mean, that's how I've been going to bed at night. You yeah. know, the last thing I listen to is something really positive and encouraging from one of these Bible teachers, um, because that's how I want to settle my day. But if you didn't believe in that or didn't even want to hear it, what would you, you know? What would you I have? think you're hopeless. I mean, you don't, you don't have the hope that we have. And hope just continues to give you what you need to get through each day. And if you don't have hope, oh, that's so hard. And I think you can ask God to give you a sense of um, compassion on people that don't have that hope. Yeah. And kind of like what you were saying, Carol, it's exactly, you're saying, let me remember what it was like to be there mm -hmm. so I can have compassion on them. And, and God will give you that compassion. I was thinking about the woman that, that hit my parents head on, you know, we, we, met her in a court situation and I didn't know what to expect and I wanted to have all these judgments and thoughts about her and then I see her and I had compassion for her and she's sobbing and that gave me even more of a soft heart and a compassion for her and I saw her not as the woman who took my mother's life but as a very a woman who's sick who has a sickness and and needs help and needs hope and so we were able to try to give that to her but only because i'd prayed about that only because i'd ask for the compassion mm. to be able to see her maybe the way god sees people yeah and that's a powerful prayer and, and what a great way to live it out i mean you mm -hmm. very practical ways because i think everybody that knew you and loves you um i i will admit i had a hard time praying for her I wanted freedom for her, but I had a hard, I even told you that I had a hard time praying for her because I felt your loss right. and, um, that, that in and, in and of itself has been a big testimony to me. And I know the people that were there that day, but I think you there again, started from a place of humility of, mm -hmm. because I mean, honestly, you know, you've heard it probably your whole life there, but for the grace of God, go I. I mean, if yeah. you look at any person's situation, I could have been in that very same situation. Yep. And we say that, but do we really, really, I mean, you know, reading the, the, the paper and, 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 you know, seeing, hearing about people, things that people do and you're like, oh, I'd never do that. Or I'd, right. you know, if that was my kid, right. I you know, we all want to shake our fingers, but really, right. but for the grace of God, we would be there. And I think if we remember that and we go back to that, it gives us a, a little bit of a softer heart. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've been, during this pandemic time, I've been doing a lot of reading and a lot of searching my own heart about prayer. And I, this keep come, keeps coming to mind and y'all may be like, what, what does that even mean? And how does that even relate? But that wouldn't be the first time that happened on this podcast. But <laughs> I've been studying a lot about Elijah and he had a great spiritual experience and the prophets of Baal were defeated. And then he ends up under a broom tree saying, Lord, just take my life. I'm, I'm done. 
right? And I was reading about that and, and I was um, struck by the fact that from highest highs to lowest lows, which is what we saw in Elijah's life right there in, encapsulated, he's able to talk to God about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that just struck me in a new way because sometimes I think we have to polish up our prayers and make them look good for God. And we feel like we can't really be honest about how we feel because he's God and, you know, we're not, and we're not allowed to say we're mad and we're not allowed to say we're, and that's one of the things that Trisha, I think through this whole journey and in, in the accident with your mom is that you've given people, me, you've given me the opportunity and the permission to be honest mm -hmm. with God about how you're feeling and the grief process that you're going through. And I think that's important to remember too, in this time that we find ourselves that it is okay for you to go to God and say, Lord, this person is getting on my ever loving last nerve. <laughs> and her name is Carol Davis. <laughs> no, I mean, it's all right to do that. I, he can handle that. And he loves, but just like, absolutely worst thing that you can do for me is give me the silent treatment, but that's exactly what we do with God. Like when we feel like we can't say the right words and to be this Susie Christian and do the right thing, you know, we stop talking to God. And if anything, it's given me permission to say, you know what? I'm frustrated. I'm alone. I am. I don't like this, but I'm going to tell you about it because under that broom tree experiences where God sustained Elijah and gave him exactly what he needed. And that's the place we need to find ourselves when it comes back to humility too, mm -hmm. is to find ourselves broken and in that place, but willing to say, here I am, warts and everything. And God gave those people in his word to show us that we can do that. Mm hmm he gave us Job. He gave us Elijah. Mm -hmm. He gave us these people in his word to say, it's all right. If you curl up and want to die for you know, a season, just keep talking to me. It's all right. If you yell at me, now I'm going to tell, I'm going to talk to you back, but yeah. you know, <laughs> it's all right. And he, cause a, a pastor said that. And I'm like, yeah, he, these are people that we can look at. And God said, yeah, I want the believers in 2020 to see these people okay. and know that that is okay and that yeah. just keeps that's talking good, to me. Trisha, that's good. I heard it. So I like, <laughs> well, but I like that visual of like he sent us those people so that yeah. today, right now in 2020, True. with everything that is going on, you can go back and reference all of these other people that had just horrific things happen, but yeah. God still loved them and talked to them and got them through and used them in a powerful yeah. way. Yeah because they stayed plugged into him and continued to talk to him and continue to, to be led by his spirit. That's the most compelling thing to, for me, because we tend to think of spiritual heroes as the people who are, you know, defeating yeah. the prophets of Baal, not sitting under a broom tree ready to die. Right, right. You know, those aren't the people that we think of as heroes, but, and yet that was part of their experience in the part of their journey to get them to that powerful place where God used them. And uh, I think that we forget that really often. So um, I think we judge for a lot of different reasons, but I think one of the biggest ones is pride. Yes. Guilty. Yes. yes. Me too. You know, I think I got I it need all figured yours. out. Yeah. Right. And anybody who has watched my life for any amount of time knows that's a complete <laughs> joke <laughs> because I do not have it figured out and I, nor have I ever even like cl been close to figuring it out. Um, and yet I get that sense of entitlement maybe of feeling like I've got to be better and I've got to whoa, 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 whoa. this was one gal contacted me from my life group she's like would you mentor me as a parent and I'm like honey I ain't the one you want mentoring you if, as a parent because I don't even get it right 10 percent of the time <laughs> but I will tell you this you know and and just being able to share with her what what I do and how I've worked through struggles and stuff like that so I just would urge you if you're listening today and you are tempted to judge before you sit behind a keyboard before you open your mouth before you type out a text message before you make a comment to lay it before God and to say search my heart God go through it like you ever you ever lost something in your house maybe your car keys, and you just like tear the house apart looking for it. 
are you willing to pray that kind of prayer to God to like look through every like crevice and corner of my heart and see if there's anything in here mm. that does not honor you and, and see what he tells you. And honestly, don't just do it for an obligatory. I'm going to check the box that I talked to the Lord about it. No, <laughs> I'm talking about honest, open, just let, lay it before him and say, look at this. And is there anything that would not glorify you in my response? And then t- listen to how he tells you to respond. Because that is the place that I think people are going to go. There's something different about her. There's something different about the way that she responded. There's some, and it, it does make a difference. Let me tell you, I can I, I tell people all the time, I know I'm saved because what runs through my mind and what doesn't come out my <laughs> mouth is proof that the Holy Spirit just shuts my mouth a lot, you know, but, um, but allow God to work in you when your temptation is to judge and to set yourself up higher. Um, ask him about humility. I, that, that would be my, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I've just talked a long time. I feel like I blabbed the whole episode, but um, no. no, we love you and we're <laughs> praying for you. And uh, like I said, we don't have it all figured out either. If you've no. got, tips or things that you do to, um, to stay humble. And especially in those hard conversations that you have with people, we'd love to hear all about it. You're welcome to email us girl talk at the light fm.org anytime day or night. And we do a little happy dance. Every time we hear from you, we have all your emails and we put them in a book so we can, you know, turn back them to them on days like today when you're like, does anybody even listen to this stuff? Um, we turn back to those and we actually read them. So you're always welcome to get in touch, join the girlfriends of the girl talk podcast on Facebook and uh, interact with us there. No, we love you. We're praying for you. If there's any way we can help, please reach out and we'll see you next time we gather around these microphones for the girl talk podcast.